Hi, and welcome to Wrong Way. And today we'll be unboxing one of the most anticipated, if not the most anticipated wheel of 2023, the Emotion V13 Challenger. So let me tell you more about it. Wrong way. First up, also huge thanks to my e-wheel for providing me this wheel for testing purposes. And if you want to spend around 4,600 euro on a wheel, then use my discount code because then you'll get 5% off. But then if you still want to spend, uh, what, what is it after discount? 4,200, 300 euro for a electric unicycle, then yeah, feel free to use their site. If you want to buy it somewhere else across the pond in the United States of America, feel free to use my links below. Now the Emotion V13 has been already out for a while and I've seen the first unboxings almost like three months ago. So I am a bit late to the party. Uh, and there's uh, actually a couple reasons for that. First up, Inmotion was telling me that uh, sadly there is no testing units um, available for me to test. And afterwards, like two months later, I was talking with, uh, with them as well. And then they said that they weren't ready to send me one because they weren't sure that it will survive me, which it's also a concern, I'm sure about that, uh, that I am a bit of a wheel abuser. But on the other hand, do you really want to send it to other people then? I don't know, food for thought. Let uh, me you know what you think about that in comments. Anyways, now they said that it's, you know, it's ready. It's, uh, it's ready to survive me. The bolts have been also replaced by my e-wheel. Or some faulty bolts in the beginning on the V13. Yeah, I'm curious to test it out. Unboxing experience, probably you've seen this in other videos as well. Let me change the frame. Uh, boom. Wow, that's some thick foam. I do like how they are packaging this wheel. Instruction manual, we'll get onto that in a second. But first, just wanna see how it looks like. I did already see it in person in real life in, in Warsaw, so it won't be like a big reveal, but I'm still super, whoop, don't fall out, but I'm still excited. Anyway, here, here it is, the Emotion V13. What a huge chunk. I do like the unboxing experience a lot, like usually it's just, you know, trying to lift up the wheel from the bottom or just try to put the box around and figure stuff out. But this is a lot more convenient. So I'm glad Emotion thought about that. All right, so let's put this here and get all the other goodies out as well. So first up, let's take a look at the pan situation. And those are relatively squishy. So we have a top pad for accelerating braking and we have this small pad for your heel and this for the front of your foot. Um, I'm glad they're in the box and they're better than what Inmotion had, but it's still with like double-sided tape. Like there's no way you can wear different shoes and make it all fit. I wish it came with either Velcro or some sort of adjust adjustable system then that you can actually try placing them in different places and make sure it's all right. Or just to make sure that it fits with different sets of shoes for know, winter riding, summer riding, because they have a different sole. And therefore, I will probably just try those out and then put Velcro on the side and use Nylon of Kinetic 2.0. On the top, I think we have the charger. Looks like a big box. And indeed, it is also a big charger. Pretty lengthy, I would say. Let me compare that to the Sherman one. All right, so here we have the old design Sherman charger. You can see that it is a lot bigger. Width is about the same, but it also feels a lot sturdier. I hope the fan won't be annoying at any point, how it is with those ones. And I think it's also a lot heavier. So the Emotion charger is uh, 1.4 kilograms and the Sherman charger is 900 grams. So you, you will feel this charger a lot in your backpack. And, and this is compared to the new design by Sherman. So, I mean veteran or big goat, I guess. So pretty hefty charger, but it is a five amp charger at uh, 126 volts. So full charge in six hours, so not too bad. Additionally, it's fanless. 
which is amazing. I love quiet chargers. Super awesome. Never mind. There is a fan. Once it got warm, it turned on. Not the quietest, not the loudest. Max charge rate on the V13 is 14 amps. So around two, two and a half hours for a full charge, which is pretty great. I'm waiting for the day we'll get like actual smart chargers or maybe like a smart VMS that like controls when you can turn off charging and and do some you know charging programming that'd be really nice like adjust the speed maybe because here's just like five amps but uh, you know could be three two ten I'm, I'm waiting for the day where we get like actual awesome chargers right out of the box like this is good but uh, you know when we pay a lot of monies then there's always room for improvement we have a tool uh, probably for the yeah for the suspension we have a pump for the air shock with in motion branding boom in motion branding doesn't double as a um, air pump for your tire but that's okay and we have more tools al tools allen keys and this uh, thing which is i believe for the adjustment of the shock so we'll see about that and some more stuff some small bits and bobs so we got some more elements and i believe those are for the suspension lockout function so let me open those up and get back to you then all right so i unboxed those parts and as you can see those are elements for adjusting the wheel to be without suspension so you put this on the side where there is the suspension like a slider design right now there's like a whole emotion video they made about it it's super cool that emotion makes like instructional videos about uh you know doing some basic work on your wheel and then you can also set up your pedal height just like on the v13 there's actually four pedal height settings if you want to use it without suspension. Pretty cool. All right, so let's uh, just put on the pads and I guess I'll talk about the wheel. You know what guys, uh, I'm looking at the pads and uh, for me as a rider, I like to have like a lot of wiggle room be between front and back and this is like not that. <laughs> and I could put them down lower. So maybe I'll do that just to like try out those pads, but uh, I am not sure if I'm even gonna bother using those pads because this is totally just not my style. So maybe I'll put them on here for a sec, but I don't think they will stay on for a long time. I do like, however, how they put those small pieces here on the outside. So it's a lot easier to peel off the double-sided tape. If you ever um, put those on a bagode, you know how annoying it is to get the double-sided tape off. All right, so because I wanted to put on the pads in a more creative way, now I can't put this one in because uh, they are um, interfering. So maybe just for the beginning, I'll put them as in motion wants me to. So fine, I'll put them here on this line and uh, I'll just give you guys the impressions on how that looks like. And then this thing here on the bottom like I guess here-ish maybe something like that all right so the pads have been set up and surprisingly they don't feel as uh, bad as I thought they would so that's definitely a plus and now we will pump up the suspension by removing this screw and here we have the valve cap so this is a um, air shock now there's uh, upsides and downsides to air shocks. Definitely in the winter, it's more prone to leaking. So if you're living in a colder climate, it might be better. Oh, it's already extending. <laughs> might be better to have a hydraulic shock like on the veteran Sherman S. And you of course need to every once in a while pump it up to make sure that your suspension is working properly. So we'll pump it up to maybe 250 PSI. The pump is actually pretty good. It pumps both ways, like in this and the other direction, I believe. Or maybe I'm just fantasizing. <laughs> so 
So we're done on this side. And there is no locking knob here. But we have a longer like rod here in the end. So it's easier to just screw it onto the valve here. So I'll put that back in place and use the included tool to like secure it just to make sure that it doesn't like escape anyways. Is it for us? No, that's for actually the, the outside thing for the suspension. So we don't have a tool to lock that in place stronger. I'll do that real quick with my own tool. Actually, the thread doesn't go into the valve. It's like it goes into the spring mechanism. So there is no danger of tightening that up strongly. That's actually an improvement from the uh, V11 design where the valve was actually the thread uh, for this uh, screw. So good on you in motion here, nice. And now that we got it all set up, I just also want to show you how to adjust the suspension. So we have this flap here on the top, which I imagine could be easy to lose at some point, but it is what it is. And then we have a hole here and this tool, which comes in a box. So it is this side and then putting in here, and then you can turn to adjust rebound. So let's jump around on the V13 a little bit, see what's the difference. All right guys, so this is the suspension of the V13 all the way closed, so slowest rebound. So that's how it looks like. And now we open it up. Really bouncy. Feels, feels really stiff too, which is a good thing. It's at 250 PSI. But of course we'll need to test that in real life scenarios. Now it's difficult to find like a middle spot, I guess, because there's no clicks, there's nothing. Just need to sort of feel it out, how many turns you can do. So I'll do somewhere in the middle here and somewhere in the middle here as well. And it's like this. And that's probably how I'll keep it. We do have the veteran Sherman next to me, but sadly there's some sort of error in the battery. So I can't show you how the suspension works like, but uh, it, because I don't want to like, like it doesn't ride. It just tilts back immediately. So I have to figure that out, but uh, I'll make sure to compare this suspension also to the S22 Pro, which I got today. And at some point also the Sherman S. So. Yeah, suspension seems to work just fine. All right, so with that out of the way, I guess I'll talk a little bit about the wheel now and what my impressions are, what are the features here. And you can like Emotion, you cannot like Emotion, but the, without a doubt, they put a lot of effort into this wheel and tried to make something really outstanding and do like a lot of tech, a lot of preparation, a lot of, I don't know, R&D into this wheel. So I'm very curious to find out how it behaves in real life. So yeah, let's uh, talk briefly about the features here. First thing is the front light and it looks like straight out of a motorcycle and it is <laughs> also really bright. And when you look at the beam, this is how a beam for any electric device should look like. And if I just Darken it down a little bit here so you guys can see. You can see very clearly that the top of the beam, which is like here, is brighter than the bottom. And that's how it should look like. So we won't blind others because of the cutoff point here on the top, as well as we'll have the actual strongest for force of the beam in the middle and far and not close. So yeah, very well thought out. However, my main gripe with this light is that it is not height adjustable. So I like to ride my wheel actually like nine or 10 degrees tilting forwards. And by that point, I believe I will just shine into the floor. So it's a real bummer that you have a super strong headlight, but I will be forced to ride in certain riding like angles because otherwise I won't be able to see shit in front of me or I will just blind others. The taillight. Uh, looks great too. Let me turn it on. Boom. So uh, the ventilators actually, the, w what you can hear now, uh, those are cooling the front beam. And they're a bit exposed, but we'll get to that in the 
tear down. So I guess it's also blinking. Yeah, it's also blinking. Doesn't get brighter, but uh, a huge step up definitely from the V12. And I guess uh, decently bright. Doesn't seem so bright as what I have now on my veteran Sherman Max. And this is, uh, by the way, a custom headlight. So can you even see it from here? <laughs> it's so low. I guess you can see the difference on camera. Like this is, this is really bright. This is like visible. So maybe I would even use some additional lighting on the V13 to be seen a bit better. Like this is not bad, a lot better than the V12, but uh, this, this is visibility. <laughs> In a similar vicinity, we also have this flap in the back and there we have two charge ports and these are GX, I don't know, something dash six. We also have a USB charge port for your phone and a USB-C charge port. Um, I just don't get it with those charge ports. Like you could use just a, I don't know, XT60 plug or something else. We don't need two charge ports. We just need one, which is strong enough. Like if you get a fast charger, I think it's better to just use one plug anyways. And then also the same plug for slower charging. But hey, that's what we get here. That's what is the trend on uh, electric unicycles. I guess putting two cheaper charge ports is better for them than one, which is more robust. Here we also have the lift switch and it's not an on off sort of switch. You have to actually hold it to lift up the wheel. And this is, uh, probably you saw it on other videos, but awkward. Like, I don't think that's a good system. But it's still cool to use for your uh, kickstand, which is metal on metal. So probably you'll scrape it. Those front, uh, I, I know, bumpers, front orange bumpers, when you use them as a stand because um, they're made of metal. So they will scratch easily. So be aware, aware of that. An area where in motion is definitely lacking a bit are the pedals. Now they're huge still. They're like, this is a size 45 foot. So the size is all right, but we have just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 studs, which are milled in. And uh, first of all, those uh, don't work as well as MTB pins. They are just of a, they just work differently. And you know, once they get a bit dull, you can't uh, replace them. And the only reason for doing this instead of proper pedals, like we have in the Novel, I'll show you in a second, is that this is a lot cheaper. So this is just a cost-effective solution. I wish in the future we will get actual studs like we get on the goat wheels. And the pedals are also not angle adjustable, as I can tell. No, no angle adjustment. So this is another bummer, but they look fairly angled, so should be comfortable for performance riding. And just for comparison here, on this side, Milanov pedals with uh, solid uh, pins, a lot more of them, and yeah, this will keep you planted. This might lead you to slip off, especially when it's wet. Now let's check the trolley handle and has some sort of mechanism here. So you can lift it up with one hand. It's very tall actually. Is it taller than my Sherman? Yeah, slightly. So just like so we can trolley it around, but uh, trolling around a 50, what, three or 50 kilogram you see won't be ever easy. But it feels actually relatively planted and it's still a bit narrower than for example the master pro so it doesn't feel that bad actually trolley handle feels re relatively sturdy but there's a bit of movement in it i like the grip here it's like you can actually grip it it's not plastic which is super nice on the top you also get the typical in motion display uh, on the screen of my camera it looks a bit blue but believe me it's black and we have all of the features here. Like I'll go through that in my main review, but it's cool that the display is here. You have also uh, this advanced screen. If you want to press and hold or you just, oh yeah, here. You have the advanced screen with more parameters and you press and hold here, even more stuff. So that is very cool. There's also this part on the left and I believe this should have been a, like a fingerprint sensor. 
but uh, it doesn't work now. I don't know if it ever will or if it's supposed to be a fingerprint sensor, but something's supposed to be here. I mean, this is not without reason. And I think there's a small sign here, which reminds me of, yeah, it looks like a fingerprint sensor thing. I don't know, interesting. And this is the main power button. All right, guys, so I think briefly we've talked about the most important things on the Emotion V13, but just, just let me really quickly also remind you of the specs of this thing and how it sort of slots into the market of EUCs. And we will, you know, deeply go into all of the performance details, what I found out in testing during my main review, so stay subscribed to see that coming. And also the write review, which will be before that, and also the teardown. So lots of content coming on the V13. Let me just first give you the brief overview, which probably I should have done in the beginning, on this wheel. This wheel is a 22 inch wheel. It's a 16 inch rim. So not 17 like the Master Pro, slightly smaller with a, as advertised, the heaviest rim on the market, which is not a good thing uh, for efficiency and performance, but I guess a good thing to, in order not to dent your rim. And it's, the rim looks like, it looks solid here. It's like, it looks very, very, very impressive. And the lift, spe lift speed is 140 kilometers an hour. Not that it matters at all. Um, I mean, it matters a bit, I guess, but uh, you can still cut out at 90 kilometers an hour or 80 something as we've seen Mercury do it, but this was due to some features, some software and power reserves on the Emotion V13. Maybe I'll need to make a, a separate video about that. First of all, the tilt bag didn't work um, as intended and the alarms didn't set off because there's a five second delay in alarms, but that's maybe a topic for a different video. Um, the top speed here is 90 kilometers an hour. And even with this 140 kilometer of free spin speed and a emblem on the motherboard, which is like no cutout, it can still happen. So, so even with the super high free spin speed, you can still have not enough power to accelerate. So, so what do we have here? We have a four and a half kilowatt nominal power motor, which is a lot more powerful than this. And then this, these are around like three and a half, something like that kilowatts or three. Um, we have a 90 kilometer an hour tilt back. So super quick. Um, and we have a relatively small battery which is a 30S 8P, 30S 4P per side in parallel, uh, which is 3000 watt hours. So my main gripe or my main thought on the Emotion V13 is that this has more range than this. And I do like electric unicycles because of their size and form factor. And do I need to go 90 kilometers an hour? No. Do I need braking and comfort and lightness in everyday scenarios? Yes, a lot more. And I think that Emotion is catering really to make a product that is just like, you know, outstanding and quick. So people talk about it a lot. And definitely on the American market, there's people that are a lot more interested into the speed than we do in the European market. And I am just not really seeing how a company that, you know, prioritizes safety, does, you know, uh, redundant hull sensors, adds like, like monitoring BMS. I mean, they call it smart BMS, but it's really like a monitoring BMS. They have to add, you know, safety features, fuses. They finally add the passive, passive cell balancing and all of this, you know, safety, those safety things, which are, which are great. And then you go like, yeah, and it, it goes 90 kilometers an hour. Uh, what I'm trying to say is going that fast on a one wheel device is just dangerous. There's no way around it. It's, it's dangerous on a motorcycle where you have two wheels. It's even more dangerous here. And as much as I did love to just test the speed and be fast on electric unicycles, I am not anymore. Like usually my top speed on the Sherman Max is just around 50 kilometers an hour or less. And I do appreciate it so much that this thing breaks on a dime. And when some, I sometimes was trying this thing, the Sherman S by friends here in Warsaw, it's just so much more difficult to accelerate and brake with. And I can't imagine, but soon I will because I'll ride it, how much more difficult it is with such a big tire, a heavy rim, and in general, 50 kilograms of weight compared to 40 or even a little bit below of the veteran Sherman Max. So I think it would be really awesome if Emotion 
you know, caring about all the safety would make wheels that don't maybe have such a top speed, but have excellent braking, excellent torque, because I've already seen some videos where the V13 didn't show that much torque, but I'll have to test it myself, of course. And um, yeah, I care about this side of things because uh, like this super speed fun won't last forever. Like motorcyclists need driver's licenses. I think you need a driver's license if you want to go 90 kilometers an hour on a <laughs> unicycle. And of course you need to brake, you need to control wobbles and you don't want to crash at those high speeds and then let someone be hurt by a wheel which just goes so so super fast. So I know this is, you know, some people talk about headroom, you talk about, you know, if it goes 90 then it goes no problem 30 or 40. Uh, you know, cars can go 200, but you don't go so fast. I think cars should be limited too, like no questions asked. And as much as cities are improving now to go like 30 kilometers an hour in a city or 50, like 30 actually is already like miles or 30 or 40 kilometers an hour to go on UC in the city. I am thinking that uh, like doing such high speeds on an UC and in motion, like being the safety you know, ambassador they proclaim themselves to be, it's just going a bit of a wrong way. Additionally, they made this wheel so heavy while having the same amount of range, which in my opinion is one of the most important factors of any PV, and you have so much weight that you practically you can't lift it. Like what if stairs happen? What if you need to bring it into a train or something? It's just huge and unwieldy, which is, you know, defeats a lot of the purpose of UC. Uh, and yes, it might bring a lot of stability into fast riding, etc. And maybe it's just considered to be some sort of like motorcycle, but I can do the same thing with the veteran Sherman or Sherman S, which are both lighter, both smaller, and therefore I think also more practical. Yeah, so anyways, with this thought and this hyper expensive UC as well, price going down with price would be also amazing because those things are getting so ridiculously expensive it's honestly it's better to just use you know public transportation and um and a bicycle oh my god what am i saying <laughs> but yeah they're actually getting super expensive so with that said um this is the most technologically advanced you see we got out there now um Oh yeah, it also has waterproofing, IPX5 for the whole shell, IPX7 for the batteries. Tons of safety features and a top speed of 90 kilometers an hour, which probably I will actually not test because frankly, what's the point? <laughs> so if you're still here, leave a like on the video, subscribe to see more content like this. I'll see you in the next video. See you soon. Jeez, how big is it? Like, look. How big and this has more range. <laughs>